All right, a time for a Lilia game. Uh, this is going to be a beginner's guide to Lilia, so I'll explain everything in as much detail as possible. It's going to be a low low game uh, to replicate the similar type of teammates and teams you will be facing. So, yeah. Gonna place the ward here after re uh, recalling and starting about 50 seconds. Near the end of your recall, you place it and you get the uh, Oracle Lens to play the game with, basically. I like to do this to avoid invades. Like, let's say the card just like instantly starts on my red buff or like, you know, goes from here to here. Generally, if they invade, especially in lower ratings, they'll also always instantly go for the buff camp. It's pretty rare that they do anything else. Uh, so it makes it very easy to spot them invade and that will allow you to adjust your decision making based off that. So, yeah. I'm starting out just on bot side here. Seems like my Sona is AFK. Fair enough. Try to uh, clip your Q on the edge as much as possible because it does additional true damage when you're hitting on the outer edge. If you don't hit it on the edge, you do not get that true damage, so you're actually just losing damage in the process. But that's something to remember with your Q. Try to hit it on the edge as much as possible. Uh, then your W is just a, an AoE that, as you can see, the small circle on the ground just now. <clears throat> well, this right here, if you hit it in the center, it does more damage, so you need to make sure you hit that in the center as well. Otherwise, you are losing damage. Your E throws out a ball, which it, like stops when it interacts with like a wall or an enemy champion or a minion or whatever. Uh, but you can throw it basically across the map if you throw it cleanly uh, without anything. When it hits, it slows and it puts the uh, passive on the target. Which is actually very relevant because that is a, a big engage tool towards teamfights. If you are starting on blue, I'd recommend doing uh, QWE as your skilling order. If you are not starting on blue, I'd recommend two points Q because your E costs 70 mana. And without blue buff, the mana sustain is a little bit rough when clearing. So you want to be careful with it in that situation. But if you, uh, again, have blue buff, you have literally zero mana sustain issues. So then the this will do slightly more. can also be used at dragon camps and stuff. Got to be a little bit sparing with your mana consumption, essentially. But you can do this, throw that over there. Pull that in towards you, and then you can start hitting that too, you know. Makes things a little bit nicer. Uh, top lane is currently pushed in, so we will be smiting. If top lane is not pushed in, you do not want to smite. I'd recommend holding it at that point, but in this case, we can just smite and we can send it. Not ward it. Losing some stacks here. Unfortunate that that was not a gank that was happening. Fair enough. It seems like this guy has potential, like Ka has the potential to be here. Currently, he has priority on top because of the wave. I did like a quick top peek. Unfortunately, it didn't happen. The uh, smolder just kind of flew away. I need to be very careful. I cannot fight this guy because mid lane prior difference is big. Top lane prior difference as well. So I'm going to get 3v1 if I'm not careful. Look at my screen. Good. All right. Um, first back here, we're going to just go for the blasting wand. Now you can, in this situation, go for Dark Seal and Emptome, which generally is pretty good uh, to do if you're going to go for the Magi's. But I'll just skip out on the Magi's entirely this game. It's okay. Uh, the stacking system is obviously a little tricky for a lot of people. There is this scuttle up that, that, does, that does spawn there. However, for me at this stage, it's better to simply just go for my camps again. Uh, so I'm going to go for the Gromp because all this respawns is better. Uh, I can catch tempo towards the Void Grubs as well. Because uh, Ka also cleared towards topside and he is actually going to be quite delayed. Because he tried to stop me and I got the back off, right? So he's going to be very delayed uh, to everything there. And if I now make tempo instead of going for the Bot Scuttle, I will be able to make it to the void grubs on spawn and probably take him before Ka even, even gets the like the slightest chance of getting there in time if that makes sense so catching all this tempo is very very valuable she there the void grubs have indeed spawned that should die perfect we'll hit these as well walk past them and walk to level five or walk to void grubs on level five essentially it does seem like my solo laners are getting clapped a little bit, which is a little worrying when going for the Void Grubs here, I'm not gonna lie. The Ka is bot lane as expected, because we figured he would be right with uh, with his tempo overall. Group them together by auto-attacking and stepping back a little bit. 
and then you can uh, clean it up fairly fairly nicely here all right my this one is fine there we go we also like new car bots or uh, so we mean by the time respawning here both of these camps should be up noting he was just bot lane so i'm gonna take both of these to deny him a lot for being bot lane if he trades rift herald for uh, the the void grubs for dragon that'd be fine with me not a problem whatsoever also to mention your ult uh, puts target that get uh, targets that get hit by your abilities to sleep and when you hit that sleeping target you'll do additional damage Try not to over damage with skills, need, need to make sure your ult goes off and the ideal skill you want to hit when targets are slept by your ultimate. That dude is low as hell. We're fighting him for sure, keep auto attacking. Yep. That worked out pretty well, I would say. I'm just gonna take this if I can. Because I have Cassante right here so I can have the opportunity to take this. If he wasn't that low, I would be more careful, but he walked up to me very low HP. I also, big thing to note here, that he doesn't have flesh, so that helps me too. Um, but yeah, I'm actually going to reset here, because if I do this camp and this guy straight walks like this, uh, he's going to get one disc scuttle in my bot lane camps most likely, and neither of those I want to happen. Uh, so instead of clearing my Krugs here, I mean, I took two of these and now I want to defend this Scuttle spawn and then make sure I catch the respawn again or potentially do the dragon. But I want to make sure that he doesn't get to just walk out of base and walk towards bot scuttle, get it. And then maybe my bot side camps as well. That would be pretty bad for me. So we're just going to be defending this instead of taking like this camp right here. And we'll just yeah, there he is. See exactly as I expected. And then we go for the ult sleep hit him with a w first and then finish him off and this is exactly why you recall there instead of doing krugs exactly okay this is now very very scary sona is also trolling a little bit by hitting that control ward right there yeah this is not good this is not good Callista is not here so we can't do this i'm just gonna do blue buff it's fine Perfect. This is like a thing, right? Where you have to defend your thing. Oh my god, they're staying? Okay, now I'm gonna have to react because if they're staying, like the enemy bot lane just kind of stuck around there. Make sure to flash over and after her and then we finish off the dragon. Yeah, I did not expect the enemy bot lane to be sticking around there for this. Let's fight that out and then we just do the scuttle here as well as we anticipated. And now there is, a, again, this very good chance that Kaz is going to run for my topside camps now, but because of the dragon and everything, I don't think I can really stop that one. Too much. I'm going to just clean up my bot side there, here, and then we'll walk up there and see if he is there. I think at this point it's fairly likely, because he already went for the blue as well, right, earlier, so... I got a dragon and bot scuttle and everything, so I guess it's kind of okay. We'll see. We'll see how aware he is of the situation. Finish this off and hope. I just, at this point, I kind of hope that my top side is up because I can't really defend it because of that dragon earlier, right? Hit the edge, I missed. That's not ideal. Need to auto attack it a bit more. Sweep. Raptors are still here. This is very good information. That is beautiful. Hit that real quick, cast mid lane. I actually don't want to lose any tempo here. I mean, Zed can survive or not. I was going to be pretty tough to save him at that HP range uh, anyway. So if I could just get the tempo of these camps here. I don't think I get to do Krugs once again. Because if I do Krugs here, I would lose quite a bit. Cast going to be there. This is a little bit scary. Let's throw an E in here. Oh, he's gonna go for this guy. Flies over the wall. Azir is showing up. We need to zap the rotate for this in this case. That's one smite use. That's okay. Q for some passive stacks here. Oh. I'm gonna have to ult this. This is very, very sad. 
Yeah, this is a little bit brutal. I need to run. Just create distance. Use your passive. Let your team do the damage. It's fine. Zed went, went to do his wave first, I believe. Which created a big problem for us initially. Pretty sure he went to do his wave first instead of just rotating over to this. But I guess it's okay. Right there, it's important. Like, I hold my ult as long as possible to try to hit as many targets as possible. But as soon as I have to use it, I'll use it, if that makes sense. Like, I can't not use it. Uh, and, like, yeah, it, it would be bad. I need to make sure to hit as many targets as possible as a priority. But if then the cat tries to dive on me like that, I have to use it defensively to sleep him. And then use my passive to create as much distance as I possibly can. That distance is important. Don't try to greet. Use Lilia passive to your advantage to outrun them. And you should be okay in a lot of cases. If you try to stick around too closely, you're going to die a lot. And that's not good. So that space there is very, very good. Okay, good. I'm going to take a reset here because I have a lot of gold. And these, these three will be respawning. So I'm most likely going to be taking those. The next dragon is going to be a thing as well. These days we go for the uh, CDR boots, Lucidity boots. I used to go Sorks a lot, but they... Kind of reduce the AP scaling on this thing as well, on the Q. And just, like, you're building mostly off of, like, the burn and damage amplification. But they also remove the ability haste from Leandris and stuff. So having the ability haste is actually very, very nice. The more Qs and the more abilities you have, the easier it will become to hold, up, uh, to hold up your passive, which is a big one. It's actually quite a big one. Right, make sure we get our camps again here. These three, at least. And then by that time, I can look for that dragon. This way, I'll have all my camps down going into the dragon play, which is what I want. I also have Leandri, so I'm going to be very, very strong. Don't have blue buffs. I'm going to be a little bit careful with my mana on my E here. Okay. Walk down this way. I'm expecting Ka at this point to go bolt the other areas. So I'm going to run after him as fast as I can. I'm going to throw an E here as well. Maybe it lands. It didn't. It did land on the Karma, though. I can ult that for the kill. There you go. Perfect. That's the good thing about E. You land that from a, mi from a big distance. And you can uh, easily go into it. I'm going to E here to spot vision. Cue that for some movement speed. And then we just run to the dragon at this point. But yeah, that's like the good thing about your E, right? Like that's, you have massive range on it. If you can land it into anything, you could just ult the target and it's just a free gank at that point because it will die. Okay, Zed currently has a very negative priority. So my bot lane should have prio advantage, but if they keep bot turret here, they will be getting it. So that's fine. Uh, it's, I'm going to have to just be a little bit careful if the Azir prio rotates. He is also relatively low though, so most likely not going to happen. Keep making sure you land your Q on the edge. We finish this off. Perfect. And then here I could just run mid lane. I still have my four Prant stacks, so I could use those to my advantage. Okay. That should be no problem. He f Oh, wait. He dashed over the... Yeah, okay. Fair enough. That's okay. I'm just going to quickly get the scuttle. I'm not going to bother with Rift Herald because Karma is also here. I'll have a negative situation for myself there. Yeah, damn. Not in time with the pings. My Cassandra didn't pay too much attention to his minimap, I believe, in that scenario. And yeah, the, the Ka showed on it. My mana isn't looking the best right now. This Rift Herald also is very low priority for me. I don't really go for that Rift Herald too much. Let's throw... Oh, that hit that wall, sad. Didn't get the best angle. I wanted to try to hit one of them for some good, for some good damage. Uh, we see Caitlyn bot... Rift Herald, again, not one of my biggest priorities, so I'm just going to leave it a little bit. Rift Herald's not that great, in my opinion. Like you can get a bit, you can get like a second tier turret with it, and that's like the best case scenario. But for the rest, all my camps are currently up, and that Rift Herald would be highly contested because the enemy had Karma there, and the uh, my top laner just died, right? So not a very good situation for me, and because of that, I'm not going to risk it for the Herald. If all my camps would be down, I could like maybe try something or whatever. But with my camps respawning and everything being up, your camps are simply worth more to you than the Rift Herald will be. Make sure to keep a good tempo here. Trying to hit level 11 as well relatively shortly. It's 
smite this actually. I have an extra smite anyway, so. We clean this up, and after this, we can potentially run top lane to get the guy. Just make sure that when you do this, you always want to make sure you can walk away from it with your Pran stacks. I didn't do it correctly there. You should have queued slightly earlier. Flies away. Fair enough. I dropped my Pran stacks there as well because of the burn tick on red buff. I could start the Rift Herald here. Oh, if, if only to like get my passive stacks actually, because this okay, they win that. They definitely win that, there's no doubt in my mind. I don't have to go there. I'll just do the Rift Herald at this point. Like this this point in time, the Rift Herald is fine. I would have just done the Herald to get my passive stacks on it to run mid lane faster. That would have been fine too. But my team wins those already with the HP the enemy had. So I'm just gonna do this and um, yeah, just chill. Otherwise I get passive or like get the passive stack, the Prance stacks off it, right? And it's free anyway. Can you like, what, like, you're like literally a tank, mate. Just go for it. You can tank that turret forever. What the hell? <laughs> okay, <laughs> that's un that's unfortunate. I'm not gonna dive that first. Like, I could technically ult the guy there, but if the Kesante is not willing to walk up whatsoever, then I'm never gonna get the kill, even if I ult there. I don't think. I can do the same thing here again, maybe. Thank you. Okay, I mean, thank you for tanking turret aggro there, Kisante. I appreciate that one. That's what I needed last time, and this time I just full send it and hope it worked out. You know what I mean? I'm gonna herald here. Break, the, break this turret, and I'll be able to potentially hit that turret as well. Bounce it in. Finish off the turret. I'm just gonna wait for the cooldown on this. Because their top laner is dead, we saw Kaa recently bot side. We know the rest of their team is also not really very close here, so we can just clean this up, queue it here. You see Leandris gets applied from Rift Herald hitting, and then we can finish this tier 2 turret for the 700 gold it provides. Between the two of us split here in this instance, of course, but that is a big one. If you can get those turrets, those side turrets with your Herald, that is good, and that's also why I wanted to dive uh, the enemy top laner there. Because of that. Because that gives me the opportunity to push. We saw Ka bolt, we saw like a lot of people bolt, so they can't really rotate for it. Other item here, we'll go for the Rift Maker, and then I actually. Uh, yeah. I'll buy an Empto. Perfect. Rift Maker Leandris is huge damage. Lilia counts as a melee champion as well, so that's very good for like Rift Maker too. Get more value. Um, yeah. Dragon in 15 seconds, so all we can do here is we're just gonna do the wolves first. And, and then we do Gromp into the bot scuttle spawn dragon tip type situation. Because I want to walk like down there here. I need to eat this, otherwise it's not gonna die in time. Make sure to get my Pran stacks up here as well. Trying to be a little bit slow with it to uh, get my Q to land at the end here. So I can run a bit. That didn't hit. If that hit like two there, I could instantly ult. Just a decent thing to think about. It's also very easy to get combat time with Lilia because of her passive burn to get your Riftmaker stacked and everything. And your damage, additional damage stacked up. I mean, that hit the Caitlyn, so that's gonna hurt. Scuttle is here for me to take right now, so we'll do this too. Hold my Pran stacks. And walk with a Sweeping Trinket. I'm not going to clear that because I figured there would be a camp here. Hold on to my Pran stacks more here to have the additional movement speed. That did not hit. Oh, that's really bad on my end. That's going to be a three-man ultimate. That's what we're looking for. Okay, my team hit the Azir instantly, which is really bad. If they would have just let me get a W off, they would have all died. Or that dude would have died instantly. But now he has the potential to, like, maybe ult us or something. That would have been scary. If you, like, the Lilia sleep, your team needs to not hit it. 
But that's like an ideal situation you want to look for, right? You want to look for like that flash, like three, four man queue into an ult. That's the biggest team fight engage you can get. It instantly decimated the enemy team right there. Nothing else they could have done after that. I'll just smite it. I have an extra smite for Baron, so it's not a problem. We can definitely do the Baron here. The best here is obviously if Cassante tanks. Whoever tanks Baron gets a debuff on it. Uh, which I will be able to show you here. This debuff gives you 50% less damage to Baron to whoever tanks it. So it doesn't... As Lilia, you do not want to be the one taking that uh, as much as possible because you have a lot of Baron damage. Like a lot, a lot of Baron damage. So that's a big one right there. Okay, my Z still dead for like 19 seconds. So I essentially have like 19 seconds to just speed clear the rest of these camps. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to clean up all my topside camps, then reset after that to go on the map when my Zed's alive. Do I? Ah, we'll have to smite that. That's okay. I'll have next smite for Dragon regardless, so that's not a problem. Right. Good. We take this. We go for the Cosmic Drive next. And get the HP there, and then we have all of these three to clear camp-wise, basically, to um, to then pressure on the map with my team again. Just gonna make sure we walk while we walk past everything here, we kill it as quickly as possible. So we eat it in to lure it towards us, and then we can just quickly delete this camp right here. I want to take the blue buff, especially not as much to Grom because my team is starting to play very forward. But the blue buff gives blue to my entire team, so I will take this for them before I'd walk up onto the map here. Here we go. I could take this real quick as well, I suppose. Don't know if that kills. That this kill, okay. It's a lot of burn damage. I should have known it killed, but, you know. Do this. Clean that up. Throw the E into the bush to spot someone there. Nope, level 15, though. Right here, uh, we have pressure here, here. I'm just gonna put the Baron pressure on bot lane as well with this wave. So we're just gonna walk at it. Cue it, so we, like, this way we pressure from all sides, which makes it very, very difficult for them to defend. That should be a death, I think, with burn damage. Maybe not. Taking a lot of damage in return here. Movement speed, run out. We're good. We got a lot of movement speed stacked up there, so we're fine, right? Gotta be a bit careful here, because that minion's gonna die on very low HP. Red buff should be up, so we're just gonna take the red buff in the meantime. Regenerate back up to a good amount of HP while we wait for the wave. Our team is just pressuring their base at the same time. But this turret on the side is worth another 700 gold, so I would like to take that too. Get red buff to the team to help them out, and then we just take this real quick. And then after this, we'll be able to run at, like, relatively okay-ish health into the base. They might be ending here, but that's okay. Yeah, there you go. Perfect. That's it for Lilia. Pretty straightforward, I would say. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this one. Hit me the like button below, and I'll see you guys in the endgame stats. Alright, a time for a Lilia game. It's gonna be a beginner's guide to Lilia, so I'll explain everything in as much detail as possible. It's also gonna be a lower rated game for that reason, because, um, well, I want the same type of teammates as the same type of enemies you would be facing yourself, so you can see it in action. And yeah, uh, initially here you wanna start at 50 seconds at the side you're not gonna be starting on. And recall at that moment. Uh, against the Kane specifically, I'm warding my Raptors, but against pretty much any other champion, I'd ward my red buff. Because if they go for an invade, Kane actually likely goes for Raptors, potentially even as a start. And pretty much any other champ goes straight to your red buff if they invade you, because that's just kind of how uh, the mentality of that goes. So, you know, it's gonna see them if they invade you, and then play the game with the Oracle Lens. Don't need the potion either, because you can sustain yourself very easily these days. If you are playing against a very aggressive early game jungler, like Lee Sin, Graves, Kindred, you know, those types of champions, you do want to be a bit careful with those. And the potion might be necessary due to uh, needing assistance and survivability on potential invades. But that is the only exception where you would need that potion. Alilia's skills are very straightforward, actually. 
Uh, all of her skills apply her passive, which is the burn tick you see here, the little bit of a dot there. Uh, this will directly impact when a target you will be able to sleep with your ultimate. And that is going to be important when landing your ultimate later on, especially. I did not smite this because I didn't get the full value out of it. So we're just going to smite this here. Always want to try to get the 600 smite value. Uh, with Lilia here, you just simply try to land it on the edge, get the additional true damage. Because if you land it on the outer edge, it'll do additional true damage. It's pretty straightforward on that one. Uh, your W is simply the cone here. You need to hit it in the center to do more damage to the target. This will be the skill you want to hit the most. So if you put targets to sleep with your ultimate, by like, which you will see to happen throughout this game, put them to sleep with the ultimate. You want to try to land your W first and then Q out, in that, if that makes sense. You'll see it in action, obviously, but yeah. If you are starting on blue buff, then I would recommend taking E on level 3. If you are not starting on blue buff, I'd not recommend that. I'd just go double points Q at that point, because E is going to cost you too much mana to use, and you're just going to be too low throughout, because it's 70 mana for your E. It's a lot. With not the most value, it's nice, but it's not the best thing, you know. So yeah, your E is also like a skill shield that pretty much goes across the entire map. You see the, the skill shield being relatively low here, but on like this indicator, but it rolls and keeps rolling until it hits something, whether that is a wall or minions or the enemy champion. And this is going to be a big like engage potential uh, for you later in the game. Because you can Q or like E snipe somebody and then your ult will be able to proc off that and you can put them to sleep, run at them and get them to kill like that. Okay, so we're not going to smite this in this instance because there is not enough top lane pressure to do so at the moment. Uh, so we're just going to go for the scuttle. We see Kane bot side here as well, so we instantly danger ping that. I can stack up my passive here, maybe. Kane was running mid lane as well. I can get this guy, no problem. We saw the guy very, very... Oh, he's already dead. Okay, I see. Mm, I should run top lane in this instance, I think. I do have to keep in mind the timer here, but... I think Darius is going to play aggressive right here. There's no ward right now. What is my pet doing? My pe I think my pet just trolled me. I'm going to recall. I can't be wasting too much time. Otherwise, I'll lose too many camps. First back, CDR boots. Boom. Kane mid. Okay. My pet just kind of walked in the middle of the lane there and just gave away the position. Darius started instantly kind of stepping back a bit more, which is not great. Now here, as you can see, we're just going to run for the respawn of the Gromp. Should be respawning here. There it is. And then we could just do Gromp into the uh, Wolves and then the Raptors. And then I can look for the Void Grubs. I'll be smiting this as well to get a little bit more speed. I'll have one smite for the Void Grubs. We'll be fine. Kane is clearing towards both side anyway. So I think I'm going to have the safety of doing them regardless. Garen has constant pressure on top. So unfortunately, I wasn't able to get that gank. If he would not have pushed that hard, I would have been able to do something. But it is what it is sometimes. Kane has a kill. He is a little bit behind in tempo though, but does have a kill. Gonna do the Raptors here, hit level 5, and then we'll be able to look for the Void Grubs. Obviously, try not to smite your Raptors. You want to have to smite for Void Grub at least. A Twitch Burn applied quite a lot actually, earlier on Deluxe. Think about it. It's a lot. Alright, walking up to this, you simply just auto-attack this, step back a bit, and then you group them together so your Q hits everything and your W will hit everything as well. So that's quite literally it. I'm gonna have to deal with this. Try to fight the Kane, not give him the opportunity for the Void Grubs. As long as my team isn't completely blind, I can do something here. Because I need their assistance on this one. We can... Hit the center on that, hit the Q, and then finish this one off. And then we'll wait a little bit here for the smite. Garen is hitting it a little bit too much, though, which is a bit scary, but... That guy's very scary on level 6 right there. My Garen is also 6, but... oh, Hit the Darius on the slow there. He did flash and he did ghost. So Tritches is dead. Flash ghost down, nothing to do about it. Like my E did slow, but it didn't matter because of both of those summoners. Uh, he's walking towards my bot side camps right now, but there's nothing up at the moment, obviously, because we cleared it earlier, and this is why you clear it like that, so he can't take anything. 
17 seconds on the... Uh, I have 17 seconds on my blue buff respawning, which means my bot side camps are all going to respawn very shortly, so I need to reset here. Going to go for the Emptome or for the uh, Blasting Wand right here for the AP, and then we're just going to run for the blue as fast as possible to make sure we don't lose that. He's either on, he's either on like Dragon here or he's doing my blue buff. They are not checking that whatsoever. That's not the best. There it is. Like, this is exactly what I expected. My bot lane is refusing to help. Good damage. Is it gonna be enough? It should be enough. Got hit. Perfect. And we instantly ult off that because we got the level up. Put him to sleep. W first. Q out. And then hit this E. And he's dead. Perfectly. That's like the, the burn take on them, right? You can instantly put targets to sleep and you get it. I would have liked them to check the dragon a little bit sooner because they definitely could have prevented the enemy from having it, but that is what it is. All right, uh, we just take its raptors real quick since we're there and then all of our camps are respawning. So we are just going to walk back because anything else would be too extended of a duration to go for in their jungle. Twitch gets a bunch of kills out of that deal. Gave him two kills even, yeah. So quite good for him i would like to get the kills myself generally speaking but obviously that's not always going to be the case because if you get the kills yourself that is just very very good for snowballing purposes but yeah what can you do i feel like twitch is going to get a lot of them because of his e doing so much damage because he's also building ap twitch for the execute right just holds his e i'll never get it Right now, we just have to, like, instead of going for ganks or anything like this, we have to make sure that we clear our camps right now. We need to keep a good camp tempo. We need to good, uh, keep good experience and gold income. So every single one of my camps is up right now, so we have to go for it. No questions asked. Uh, he's doing the scuttle, I see. So the scuttle will not be something I can go for then. I wanted to, after this, do the scuttle, but the, the, the Garen is just doing it, so can't do that. Can't deal with it. Might be able to gank top, but I have to keep the mind that there's a control art here. So, like, the way of ganking top would probably be through lane at this point. All I have to do is just walk at him. And, I mean, Garen doesn't have CC, so it can get pretty rough here. Make sure to not forget the auto attack as well. It adds good damage. Which went for the bot rotation. He's getting quite fed here. Could potentially stall a little bit on this top lane scenario. We're gonna do this. Then we're gonna auto attack this thing. Q here. He is going extremely aggressive. It's it's warded here, so I'm gonna I'm gonna have to like. Just clear the ward. Clean this. We know Kane is here. Need this guy to show up for this for these void grubs. The Dari shouldn't be able to do much because he doesn't have much mana. Just kind of need my Twitch to not be AFK. I'm gonna hold my smite here until I need it. Until the Kane walks up for one of them. So I'll wait as long as possible here. And then we'll smite the last one. Extra W second. Perfect. We'll, we'll quickly go scout here if he's doing some of these camps. It's all down. Dari is definitely reset. Twitch is reset, so I'm just going to reset too. There's nothing else to be done here. Unfortunately, cannot afford my Leanderies right now. That would be, would have been nice, but... As you can see now, where Grump is respawning again, so I have to reset right there. If I don't reset, uh, I will be losing my camp tempo once again, and that's not something I want. Twitch has 100% kill participation. <laughs> okay. Pretty good for him. Ooh, Botlane's a bit in trouble. I can hit this real quick for a little bit of movement speed off my Q. I missed that one. I mean, I can't do too much. My uh, Seraphine walked all the way to Narnia on that one. So it's going to be pretty rough. If I hit that E, that would be decent, but I didn't. So. Hit him real quick. Chase it through, hit the E for the slow, and I get my passive extended so I have more movement speed. Yeah. 
get that one barely and this one dies as well very good right there we just use the movement speed oh my god i got body blocked too <laughs> okay that scared me uh right there we just use the movement speed to chase it to uh yeah well you know she can't outrun me q hits her she dies to burn damage we're fine we can heal enough off of getting this kill on this camp here so we should be able to clear the rest of our camps up right now which is what i'll be doing because that makes my next back just a little bit more efficient and i also don't have to back while all my camps are up i can back while all my camps are down which is also a bit more efficient so all of that should work oh there we go q keep walking Pr practically back to full hp twitch is going for the top gank right now twitch is rotating very well i will say i've also given him enough kills for him to start snowballing heavily which is very good my CS is looking very good as well, like very good game tempo in general, right? Making sure to keep like recalling in time for my camps and everything. He did dragon, that's fair enough. For me, this is okay, because I wouldn't have had that pressure on bot lane there anyway. And in this instance, I have an entire jungle clear as a tempo on the guy right now. Mm, I could technically ult that, but it's going to be too late on that. So I'm going to first just stack my passive on this thing. And then we're just going to turret dive top lane. So hit it with this. I don't have ult. I'm trolling. Very nice. Garen got it. I, for some reason, thought I had ult going into that. I, don't ask me why. I have no answer for you. I'm blind, I guess. Alright, good. Push this out. Get this. We pretty sure Kane was recently bot side, so his top side camp should be up. I do have to be a bit careful because I'm running out of mana right now. Which is uh, a little bit worrying. Definitely do not use your E, use your other skills. Kane is seen on the map right now, so I have some additional time available to me. He gets that turret, which is fine. I get some of Kane's camps. I can get two, most likely. If not, I'll just be able to run away because Lilia has that covered. Just need to make sure I have four Prance stacks to be able to run away and I'll be fine. All right, beautiful. Get two camps. Run a bunch of distance. Use the plant and reset. Because now, by this time, my bot side camp, my Gromp will be respawning very shortly here. So I need to make sure I catch that respawn again. There we go, Leandris. Next item will be the Riftmaker. I'll buy all of those things. It's fine. And as you can see, the Gromp has respawned here once again. So we're going to make our haste over there real quick. To be able to take everything again and we're gonna do our entire jungle clear before even thinking about rift herald because rift herald is not worth more than the rest of my camps essentially not really like dropping like one camp for it sure but okay he did do my blue in fact unfortunately that is fair enough could be nothing going on on both side right there i'm just gonna uh, catch my camp tempo right here Make sure I hit level 11. Seems like Garen is even doing Rift Herald. That's fine with me. There's level 11. I might have... To. Okay, now I have to help him, sadly. I want the red buff really, really badly. Okay, let's go. Twitch recalled, actually. That's pretty brutal. Uh, it's good timing there, too. Yeah, I mean, without Twitch, I don't really want to do that fight. Like, with Twitch, I'm absolutely down. But without Twitch, I really don't want to do it. It's good zoning from Lux there, holding her E up the entire time. I mean, they can't Rift Herald like this. Like, as long as Twitch doesn't, like, completely leave the situation, it's free. Make sure not to get hit by the Lux Rare. That's a big one. Get that in the center there. Get the smite on the Rift Herald, too. And finish off the game. Right there, it's very important that I, st like, play it as slowly as I can. To hit them with as much burn damage as I can. And then try to center my W onto one of the targets. Because it's the big burst damage. 
Uh, but yeah, the burn damage and the kiting play is important there, using my passive correctly, making sure I don't get hit by Lux CC and everything like that. It's the only way I'm playing that. Otherwise, it would not work. Still have a full minute on Dragon, so I can take his topside two camps here once again, and then I will be able to just take the top Krugs. I'll take my Krugs here and go reset for this Dragon. Because at this point in time, I'm two Dragons behind. I definitely am going to need this one. Which is very strong. Looking pretty solid, I would say. That's a bit aggressive on top there. Get the Rift Maker here perfectly. Go Cosmic Drive next, get the movement speed first. Gonna need this dragon. Uh, 20 seconds. I will just walk to like Grump here and we're gonna stack my passive on it. So I can walk into the dragon pretty easily, I would say. Kane is spotted bot side. If I can get my passive stacks on this, that's definitely what I want right now. Getting the Prance stacks up is very useful. My Maokai is playing a little bit too passive, unfortunately. That could have been a dead Kane. You just have to walk for it. Okay, we hit the E on Dragon to extend our passive, so we could just run down the cane here. Good Q. He actually avoided it. Damn, that's annoying. If that Q lands, he's just dead, because I can ult him and he just dies. Nothing you can do at that point. That didn't hit either. Okay. Damn it. Damn it. And that scenario was just simply like a Maokai thing, right? If you just walk straight at Kane, engages that fight knowing I could be there, then that's good. That's a body block and a half. I'm so sad. Sleep, run away, create as much distance as I can, hit the E. Get the kill there at least. Okay, I thought Darius was gonna chase, he didn't. Their jungler is dead, so they can't really drag in here. Don't get lit by the lock. I'm so dead, I'm so dead. And I got interrupted out of that because Marco doesn't want to go in. Okay. I mean, Twitch gets the clean up here, it seems. That's fine. Oh, I cannot get hit by those lock skews, man. That is very, very bad. Twitch gets the clean it, though. That's good. But I gave a thousand gold shot down to Darius. Very good Darius rotation, to be fair. My Marco is playing a little bit too afraid for the type of champion he is. He still had flash as well, so he can, like, flash W to get an engage to create space for me there. Obviously, should not be getting hit by lock skew in the first place. Which was kind of a, a kind of a bad one on my end, but that's I don't know about that one. But yeah, I, I like as 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 a Maokai support, he should be playing slight slightly more aggressive to make it much much easier. But Twitch gets to clean it up, so I guess it's okay. It's actually better for me to wait by doing blue here because the moment it hits the twenty minute mark, I'll give blue to the entire team. So in 15 seconds, my, my entire team gets blue up instead of just the, me and one other person. So we're going to lower it, but we're not going to kill it until the 20 minute mark. Wait a little bit longer. There it is. Blue gets stronger and now it gives the blue to the entire team. Take that. Entire team gets blue buff. I would like to do dragon. Twitch is running top, which has got me worried, and Lux is teleporting to bot lane, which has got me even more worried. Twitch is... Uh, Twitch is trolling. Alright, can't do this. Twitch running top like that, there's nothing I can do. I should have not got hit by that, sleep the Lux instantly. He's gonna flash first, we Q, we W, we Q, sorry. We finish him off. W comes first in a combination like that. And I need to ult, so or I need to herald soon. So I'm probably just going to have to put it down here. P Maokai, please, man. You are literally in position to just murk the guy. Really? Oh, that's so... so that's, like, really frustrating sometimes. Oh, you are risking it. Oh, you are sending the Herald in the wrong direction. Lovely. Nice. Yep. Great. All right. Okay, okay. I mean, she's going to get the... No, nah, she doesn't even get the mid turret with it, I think. Uh, whatever. It's a waste of a herald. Thank you, Seraphine. <laughs> so sad. This is why the herald's just not worth it, especially if your team griefs one. Because they like she, like, picked it up and griefed it instantly. 
Your team will click the Herald just like they will just do it. It's just very common occurrence these days. I'm just gonna send the dragon here. She'll be able to just do it for the most part. Lower it, finish it off. Perfect. Sweep. Don't know if there's any vision here. Can't walk up. Maokai's resetting, so I'm too afraid. I don't want to walk by myself there. Like, if Maokai is not, like, walking with me, I can't do anything. I get collapsed on by, like, three people. I'm instantly dead without him. Right, they get that blue buff. My entire top side is up, so I'll just go claim everything here. Keep getting my camp experience overall. Get the uh, XP income. Give the entire team red buff here as well. Top is looking a little bit suspect. I feel like Seraphine may be dead here, actually. Yeah. Would they Baron? Probably not, right? Which is doing huge damage. I think that guy's dead too. Did a burn. Yeah, Twitch burn. Yep. That was a bad Q. That is a Darius. I can ult that guy and one shot him. It's fine. Try to hit him on the edge there. Perfect. Oh, that's a flash heal. Okay, fair. Keep my Pran stacks alive as much as I can here. Clean the wave. Hit the E on the guy, maybe. That's big damage. He's going to lose a lot of health for that one. Now, obviously, I have a bit of a problem with burn damage right now. Good hit, but it's not going to be enough. They do finish a turret, though, which is good. Using my range, my kiting potential here as much as I can. Okay, I have to flash that one, I think, because if that hits Kane, ult ults me, I'm dead. I did hit. Perfect. Too aggressive. He's on here, probably. There he is. Maokai, can you rest your W, please? Okay, fair enough. I'm going to be resetting then. There's nothing else to be done here. Twitch is also backing, so I'll take the time to back as well. Uh, Twitch is snowballing slightly harder than me because he got all the kills in the early game, really. So fair enough, you know. Get the cosmic drive here. We'll go for the death cap next. Beautiful. All right. Both set camps are up, so I'll go take everything. Kind of wait for the blue to respawn to give the blue to my team here as well. Last two items most likely here are going to be Death Cap and Void Staff, by the way. Most likely. Okay, do this for more movement speed. And see if we can chase something, maybe. Throw the E. Could hit something, didn't. Don't have flash currently. Like, flash Q is a big engage potential for Lilia. Because yeah, you can flash Q like three, four targets, get your ultimate off, and just like get an insane teamfight engage. Gonna hit the mid wave here to get our Pran stacks back up once again. Oh, that's not great. I missed that one as well. God damn it. That was really bad on my end. Definitely should have killed the Lux there. They had that covered. Suppose we could just Baron here. Which is hunting for kills a lot, though. Team. Let's go for Baron, man. Baron! What? Are you kidding me? Garen! Oh my. Okay. Well, whatever then. I'm not doing Baron. Rats. This guy goes bot lane for like one kill and Garen just goes for like a top minion wave. Like, there's nothing I can do about it. Garen just simply refused to tank it. It's it's quite literally that simple. I'm not going to be able to do enough dam like, damage by myself. Seraphine's useless. 0-7, she's not going to do anything. If Garen doesn't want to tank it or Twitch doesn't want to show up for it, there's just simply no way to do it. 
In that case, we're just gonna back play for the dragon. If Twitch would have simply knock on bot lane and went to the Baron, we could have just had Baron. He didn't get anything bot lane either, so he's also trolling. That's great typing on my end. Amazing. I'm gonna try to get the blue buff here before the fight. Lazy. Absolutely beautiful. Okay. Gonna apply damage to this. It should be okay. 613 is something to remember. Lux burst is high, so I also have to remember that for the smite. Lux gets the engage. I'll focus on getting the smite. I got the smite. Perfect. Extend my passive and then run at this fight. Could do Baron once again, but I have literally zero faith that my team will ever walk for it if they didn't go for the last one, so I guess that's not the move. Uh, I mean, you know, if they want to do it, we can just send it. It'll be free. As long as Maokai tanks it, I'm fine. I need to not tank the Baron, and the reason I need to not tank the Baron is because whoever tanks it gets a debuff on Baron. Which will cost you 50% damage on it, so the Maokai needs to be the one tanking it, and whoever stands the closest to Baron is the one that tanks it. And my damage is really, really high with my burn damage on Baron, so it needs to not be me. I see. Kill that. Don't hit the- you monsters! My Twitch kept hitting Baron, which actually almost gave them Baron. That's really brutal. Jesus Christ, man. I was putting the guy to sleep and it was gonna be free. I can just chase the Lux here. There's nothing she can do. My movement speed is way too high. The power about Lilia right here. So I can chase this guy as well. There he goes. One shot him too. That was no turret there, so there's nothing he can do. Whoa, that's me dead. Please, Lilia, movement speed. Oh, that's a flash. My my, Terrafine seems to be slightly blind as well. Lovely. Uh, luckily, I have Cosmic Drive and Lilia passive, so I can be fine there. Even flashed on me as well. He does have a force of nature, which allows him a lot of movement speed. Good purchase against our team, obviously. Pick all this up. I do have a tremendous amount of gold, so backing is definitely something I want to prioritize. Because I can get an entire death cap on this back. That's definitely worth it. And then we're just going to go for the uh, Void Staff here to finish it off. To get Magic Pen. Because they're stacking a lot of Magic Resist. Which is obvious because both me, Twi me and Twitch are fed. And we're both AP champions. Twitch is going a bit too aggressive there. Without me. But I'm also not going to uh, not spend my 3.3k gold. Before I try to go for another fight. That would be very troll on my end. So, you know. Just going to have to accept it. Which could have just been like slightly patient until I got back in there. Clean that up. And the enemy team is completely chasing Garen, so I probably will be able to make it there. Let's see if there is... Nope. Oh, it didn't hit. Okay, there is one here. I'm gonna just hit as many of these as skills as I can to get my passive up. Make sure to not get hit by the locks there. Hit the W in the center. Jenna's also dead. Okay. Use my movement. Use your movement speed. Like, just use it to kite. You can easily do that. Again, try to hit the wave here for us. Again, the passive stacks. We want to have those. Sorry, she sadly cleared the rest of it, so I couldn't get more passive stacks. I want to be careful in this scenario. Because, again, uh, I'm not Twitch. I'm not going to walk up like a maniac without him in the vicinity. We are both the strongest members, so... I'll ult it to Darius, that is fine with me. Good damage. He's dead. Cute to hold passive stacks. In case the cane was not was not necessary, that's fine. Keep holding my passive stacks, just run at the guy. Good, good E. Got some damage on that. 
keep kiting, keep playing slow. Don't get hit by any skill shots. Oh, missed my W, that was pretty bad. Anyway, that should be a game. So yeah, uh, lost item void stuff here, and that is it for Lilia. I hope you guys have enjoyed this one. If you did, make sure to hit the like button below, helps me quite a bit. And with that being said, I'll see you guys in the end game stats. Alright, so for the end game stats for both games here, starting off with game number one, uh, I ended up doing 11.9k damage, which is the second highest on my team. It's just a very respectable amount of damage. Not too much else there. True damage at about 2400. We have objective damage at 57.5k. This is obviously a big one to keep on top of. That's uh, very important. Healing done, 20k. Damage taken at 25.8, also the most. Self-mitigated under 28.3, which is also the most. Uh, we have gold earned at 11.8. This is just very consistent farming. Allows you very good, good gold income. To be able to just be on par here with the Callista. For the runes, Conquer healed me for only 79, which is not the most at all. But the adaptive damage is way more important. Overheal for a total of 10,000 shielding. Like this, this thing gets overlooked a lot. People run Triumph on Lilia a lot, but overheal is crazy. Like 10,000 shielding right here, 24 minute game. This gets, this gets really ridiculous sometimes. We have Tenacity CC reduction, Coup de Grave for some additional damage. Didn't have the most skill participation in this game specifically, so the Coup de Grave damage is going to be lower, of course. A celerity for a good amount of extra distance and then water walking for the additional movement speed and fighting power in river as well. All right, so for game number two here, I ended up doing 33.7k damage, which is just slightly lower than Twitch, which is about right. It, 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 I mean, it makes sense, right? He got the early kill, so he got the snowball slightly faster than me, damage-wise as well. Uh, so he, he got more kills, he gets more damage, makes sense. We get about equal, though. Definitely a game for the two of us against whoever else this was. So not too bad. We have true damage here at 7.6k, uh, Twitch at 14k. This is, yeah, this is a high amount of true damage, but Twitch's true damage is obviously ridiculous. Like, AP Twitch does a lot of damage, especially if it gets fed. Objective damage at 55.7k. Healing done at 26k. Damage taken at 342 which is the most. Self-mitigated at another 45.6. So I really did take a lot of damage, especially for, like, the Twitch as well, which is good. Gold earned at 16.6, Twitch at 17 uh, this is just a lot of farming consistency here, because I have 284 CS, which is nearly 100 more than Twitch. Now he got, like, shutdowns, and he got uh, five more kills than me, obviously, so there is that. But the CS difference is what makes it uh, that close still. I believe he got, like, a th he got some good shutdowns, I think, as well. I mean, five kills is 1,500 gold instantly, right? That's a lot of money already. Uh, so, yeah. And we have then for the runes, Conqueror healed me for 300, but again, the healing here is not the most important thing. The adaptive damage is, so adaptive damage is something you don't see, but it's very valuable. Overheal for almost 16k total shielding, that's a colossal amount of shielding. And this is by far the better rune, as you saw in the earlier one as well. Like a 24 minute game was like 10k shielding, this is like a 31 minute game, I have like 16k shielding from overheal, which is ridiculous. We have Legend Tenacity for the uh, CC reduction, Coup de Grave for some additional damage, and then Celerity for 23k extra distance, and then Water Walking for some extra, um, well, River Power slash Movement Speed there as well. Last item here is Void Staff, and that is it for Lilia. You can sell your boots as well, potentially, for another damage item, like Rylai's even, Sonia's, because you have enough movement speed with Cosmic Drive and with your Prance passive to be fine, so... With all that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed these games. If you did, make sure to like button below. I upload daily, so be sure to subscribe, and I'll see you guys tomorrow with another video. Bye.